bomb time. Take a wild guess what this is going to look like. Yup, it's Super Bomberman 2, but with Luigi in the lead role. Because of how slow the game runs, blowing up enemies is a massive chore. It's only made worse by their hitboxes being about half the size of their sprites, and the pitiful starting size of each bomb's explosion. Power-ups are in the game, but they're quite rare. I only ever saw two. One for an extra bomb drop, and another for invincibility. Even when you do get rid of every enemy, you still need to find the door to get out. Yes, the door is buried. Here's hoping you find it before the timer runs out, assuming you can even read what the timer says. Boxes World. There's not much to say in this one. It's another block-pushing puzzle game, but it has a bear in the lead role. If I mentioned I don't like block-pushing puzzle games, I'm pretty sure I have. Brave Boy. Help Trunks get his sword out of a giant block of ice by collecting all of the fruit. This and other sentences that only make sense in the Lexabook universe. Two monsters are constantly trying to stop you. A smaller one which wanders around the grassy areas, and a big one which can walk through walls. Speaking of, the walls aren't. I had trouble figuring out where most walls started and ended because Trunks' sprite doesn't line up with them. He usually looks like he's walking on top of the walls instead of between them. Still, there are only 8 stages and I got through all of them in under 10 minutes. The experience is fast, but the music isn't. You might have noticed this already, but from here on out, the music plays at one speed at the title screen, then slows down dramatically in-game. In other words, the music goes from a 5 second loop to a 9 second loop. Burrow. Help Santa fumble around in a dark maze so he can eat a giant cookie. I'm assuming that's what that is. Santa can only see one space ahead, making it hard to dodge the rave cats that wander the halls. This is nothing but guesswork. Avoiding the cats wastes way too much time, so a single wrong turn can mean failing the level. That is, of course, unless you boost the timer by collecting dragon heads. I guess the reindeer weren't badass enough for Santa anymore? Conviction. Move a glob of shit around to collect gold coin lollipops. Simple concept, bad execution. Every level is a long series of doors, which warp you to other doors. I can't think of a single time I've seen this in a game and thought, yes, this will be a joyful and engaging experience which I will want to play again and again and look back on fondly when I'm older. Making things worse are the controls. I don't know what I expected this little tumor to control like, but man is it stiff and unresponsive. To the point that dodging otherwise non-threatening jellyfish looking things is a challenge. Oh, and you're on a timer. I am really getting sick of timers. Cute fish. I disagree, it looks pretty angry. And are those human teeth? Yes, that is correct. The teeth are human. Pick some bait and try to fish stuff out. There aren't any instructions, and I couldn't for the life of me figure out how this game worked. Usually nothing happened, except for stuff jumping out of the water just to taunt me. But a couple of times, something bit the line. I assume that's what it means when the line starts doing figure eights. Do I move the D-pad around, pull it back, mash a button, mash all the buttons? I only ever managed to catch one thing. A lobster. Or is it a crayfish? Or whatever. Dark Castle. No, it's not that Dark Castle. And I know some wise ass out there is going to argue that this is the better Dark Castle. But holy shit is this game annoying. You have to touch the flying tomatoes and or balloon demons to power up and defeat the dragon. Or the gargoyles. Or whatever else is on the map. You know, when I say it out loud, it sounds like a bad Monty Python sketch and the randomly appearing and disappearing walls that can block you off or trap you with the monsters that follow your position don't help that notion. What also doesn't help is when the monster or the power-up item wanders out of bounds or flat-out disappears and makes it impossible to finish a room. Even I somehow got out of bounds. It's like nothing in this game wants to be in this game. Even parts of the music will drop out for long stretches of time.
defensive. It's a lot like the pseudo-missile command game from earlier, but here there's nothing to protect. Also, you can just sit in the corner, hold fire, and never get hit by anything. Not the UFOs, not the fighter planes, not the nerf darts, nothing. Wait, play dice? But the menu just says dice. Roll a die around a board so that it ends up in the same position as another die, with the red dot facing up. There are bomb spaces later to avoid, but otherwise not much in the way of a challenge. There's no real end as the game loops when you finish all nine stages, which for me happened in under four minutes. The one game I was entertained by, and it was one of the shortest on the whole console. Alright, entertained is a bit of a stretch. Discus. Thought we were past the crappy track and field games? Hell no! Mash a button to build up power, then hit forward, then hold up to determine the throwing angle. I had to figure all of this out myself, mind you, and my hand cramped up from mashing to max out the power bar. Wait... Is that a caveman? Dragon Den. Take the role of Sonic Blast Man's little brother and shoot rocket fists at two dragon heads. I'm sorry if I'm making this sound way more interesting than it actually is. The jumping feels very Action 52-like, and the hitbox for the dragon heads seems to come and go if you're not hitting them right between the eyes. Every stage is the same, except you have slightly more things to dodge. Then again, dodging doesn't necessarily matter. I lost all of my lives in one stage because I kept getting hit by... absolutely nothing. I feel like I'm getting punished for succeeding. Dune War. It's more like Grassy Field War, but whatever, the name is the least of the game's problems. Help Bazooka Guy shoot down planes and whatever they're firing at him in one never-ending stage of monotony. Even knowing the planes only come from one side of the screen, rotating to aim at them feels anything but comfortable. Whatever direction you think I'm hitting on the D-pad to rotate this guy, I guarantee you're wrong. The best part is when a plane approaches from a weird angle that you can't hit because you're only able to shoot in eight directions. Because planes need to be hit multiple times and the shot delay is way too long, it crashes into you and you lose a life. I miss Command & Conquer so much. Eating. Well, that's not the title image I expected to see, but I am American, so I should be really good at this game. Play as a mutated mouse balloon thing and eat random shit that flies by. Birds, insects, floating bear heads, it's all fair game. Getting three or four of the same thing opens up a new form, like the bird cat mouse balloon thing, or the sunglasses douche bro mouse balloon thing. Do they do anything special? Eh, not really, no. Then the game starts dropping ice cream cones to freeze you in place, and gusts of wind that are hard to see against certain backgrounds. While not as bad as some of the previous games, it's still a total chore to play. Edacity Snakes. Because I know someone out there is thinking it, yes, audacity is a real word. This is that snake game you've seen on everything from flash game sites to graphing calculators. If you think this is actually moving at a decent pace and isn't so bad, I should note that it's only doing this because I'm mashing the D-pad. Here's what it looks like when I let the game run at normal speed. Enchanter. It's Dragon Head without the Dragon Heads. Dodge spiders and spikes while shooting at glowing bats until the game tells you to stop. Faster bats count for more points, and points determine when you reach the next level. If nothing else, it at least didn't kill me for no reason like Dragon Head. And it gave me a pathetic looking victory screen when I beat it in under 7 minutes. Final Fighter. And no, it's not what you think it is. Take control of that giant boss walker from the first level of Battletoads, and shoot whatever happens to drive past. Survive until the timer hits zero, and move on. I didn't say the specific time, because the timer runs even slower than the music. 35 seconds on this game's timer is actually closer to... 5 minutes. You can still get shot from off-screen, so by the second or third level, you're all but guaranteed to die. Final Man. Is that a hat or a pizza monster? You're a turret that can only aim in five directions, taking out tanks as they roll in and try to shoot you. 
Some of the maps are so well designed that at certain angles, you end up shooting into a wall or the side of a building. Even then, shots only travel a certain distance before exploding, so you have to let everything get in close. Blue tanks take two shots and red tanks take one, then drop a power-up. Aside from the health one, I have no idea what most of these power-ups do. Sometimes tanks will instantly shoot when in position, so even if you're quick, you'll still take damage and eventually die. The upside to that is the game runs a hell of a lot faster when you're dead. Fish War I swear I've already played a game like this on this console, but you eat fish to become a bigger fish so you can eat more fish. There's a dash button, but nothing in this game moves fast enough to warrant using it. It also does nothing for the game's biggest problem. You need to eat a lot to get the fish to grow, and the things you can eat don't show up often enough. I went several minutes without anything my fish could eat spawning. Oh, but when you do get your fish to start growing, another problem comes up. You can't tell what other fish, if any, you can eat. Whenever my fish grew and I tried to eat other, slightly bigger fish, I'd lose a life. And when you lose a life, your fish goes back to its starting size. It's like climbing halfway up a hill only to get kicked back down. Five days. Wait a minute, this music is recycled from another game. This has probably happened a lot more often and I just didn't notice it because... I mean, at this point, I'm just focused on getting through all the games so I can punt this thing into the nearest dumpster. Let's just get this over- oh my god, it's the same damn thing as Final Man. Same map layouts, same turret setup, same enemies just with soldiers instead of tanks. They changed a few tiles and sprites, and called it another game. That's a full-on FIFA move, and I will not stand for it. Free? What's free? Oh, as in freestyle swimming! Yet another swimming game. Great. And at the Athens Olympics, no less. Hit buttons to make budget Chun-Li swim faster. Of course, by doing this, you also ensure she eventually drowns. I'm guessing there's a rhythm to this, but it seemed like no matter what I did, she always ran out of stamina and stopped moving not even halfway in. Gem. But instead of holograms, you just have this horrible, starry, drug-induced nightmare. It's Pac-Man, but with way more dots, much slower, and next to no tension. Treasure chests act like power pellets to stun the big fish, and there are only three stages, so it only took about seven minutes for me to sleepwalk my way through this tedious crap. Ghost Palace. Is that Samus's helmet? Oh, are you... It's the same game as Enchanter, with different sprites. Five stages long, done in under four minutes, moving on. Ghost Ship. I swear that ship is from Bucky O'Hare. Speaking of, this is Battleship. It has a couple special moves to pick more than one space at a time, but otherwise, it's just really slow Battleship. I don't like Battleship at normal speed, much less at Lexabook speed. Hamel. Why is the title music Frere Jaca? It's the same game as Boxes World. Sprites aside, the only difference is the loud power-up sound that plays every time you move. Is this it the rest of the way? Just Games that are recycled versions of other games? I feel like we've graduated from Lexabook Purgatory to Lexabook Hell. Hell. I didn't mean that literally, but sure, fine. It's a gallery shooter where you help some kid in a onesie shoot a bunch of sentient trash bags and rabbits. Then make that giant enemy bar decrease by shooting gold chickens. I struggled with this at first because I didn't know I had to hold up or down before I could shoot it all. Also, I thought shooting the rabbits made the gold chickens spawn faster, but that didn't work most of the time, so it's probably just random. The enemy bar is supposed to get larger as levels go on, but instead levels will end while they still have health. Speaking of, there are way too many levels. 
I tapped out at stage 16 because I was just hanging out near the left side and holding fire most of the time. Hitting... Mices? Drag this ape from side to side and throw rocks at the mice before they crawl into too many holes. Yes, this is another game we already saw in some form. The lightning bolt power-up doubles your speed, and it's pretty much the only way to have a chance. If five mice make it into the holes, it's game over. Unfortunately, the ape moves way too slow to be able to cover even half of the screen. I'm actually impressed in a weird way. The ape manages to move too slow in a game that already runs really slow. Hitting. I don't know if I'm more appalled by the bad name or the abominations next to it. Hit one of two buttons to zap these crimes against nature out of existence before they hatch and run away. Somehow this game, played with only two buttons, has super laggy inputs. Even so, it's still incredibly easy. Eventually the speed doubles and these child drawings come to life, like this mutated horse, require two hits, which you usually don't have time to land. Still, I never game over it or lost a life or whatever and finished the game in under five minutes. Is it possible to lose at this game? I mean, I know I only played it for a few minutes, but I am not curious enough to go back and find out. Horrible area- YOU AGAIN?! Trap enemies in a box to kill them, and do it X amount of times to move up a level. This game barely works. I say barely because it's still possible, but stuff like randomly not being able to move happens. Also, this red seal thing keeps chasing me around and destroying my lines. So even when making really small boxes, I couldn't take out any enemies. Hua Rong Dao. This actually looks promising, is it? Oh, it's... It's a sliding block puzzle. Great, you know how much I love those. This is actually a very old puzzle based on the Romance of the Three Kingdoms stories. So at least it's got that going for it. But I also hate sliding block puzzles. I mean, at least this one functions. It's not like a block will duplicate itself for no reason, or the biggest block will teleport to the end of the stage handing me a win. You can also make custom games, so guess where I decided to place the big block? Hey, at least this way I legitimately won a game. And lastly for this video, hurry. Oh, I mean hurry burry. What is that in the upper left? Did you know there's a level select sheet in this game? To do it, you press... any of the face buttons. It's a dressed up block puzzle game where you do things like feed strawberries to carnivorous plants so you can walk past safely, or use bombs to blow up ice statues. The problem is, these statues freeze you if you touch them, or destroy them, or otherwise get near them. In other words, you're just not going to win. Well, that's... kind of a letdown. You know what, since we have to do all of these games anyway, fuck it, let's do one more. I mean, let's try to end on a high no higher note. Ice Hockey. Or, wait, no, it's called Slapshot. No, it's called Super Pro Hawk. Why does this game have three names? Hold the fuck up, there are credits to this game? With English names? Hold on, I smell a rat, I'm going to do some research on this. Oh. My. God. They straight up stole an Intellivision game and put it on the Lexibook console.